Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. Today I'm reporting on a two-day marksmanship clinic that I just attended over the weekend. And this marksmanship clinic is called Project Appleseed. It's, it's sponsored by the Revolutionary War Veterans Association, uh, which was just formed in 2005 by a group of American patriots who were concerned about the direction our country was headed in. And they decided that there was something that they could do about it. And what they decided to do was to combine marksmanship training with uh, lectures on the uh, Revolutionary War history of, a, uh, of our Revolutionary War and um, people have forgotten about this war, forgotten about all the men and women who have given their lives uh, so that we could enjoy the freedoms that we take for granted today and that we are losing rapidly today and one way that these people were able, able to overthrow tyranny so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have is uh, because they were uh, they were able to take, p uh, pick up arms and uh, throw off the tyranny. And so uh, when you have an armed citizenry, you have protection against uh, tyranny in government. And this is not an anti-government group. Uh, they are just uh, concerned about uh, educating Americans, teaching Americans uh, history so they have an appreciation. Uh, the marksmanship clinic was absolutely fantastic. The training was first class. <coughs> It only costs seventy dollars for two days. Women is e is even less. For uh, women is ten dollars for two days, and if you um, uh, if you join the uh, Revolutionary War Veterans Association for twenty dollars a year, you can continue to uh, repeat the class until you can earn your uh, uh, your rifleman uh, badge. And they say typically it takes uh, three uh, classes for the average person. Some more, some less. Um, and uh, I definitely intend to go back to this uh, course and earn my rifleman pa patch, which, is, which is an expert level uh, rifleman uh, using the Army qualification uh, test. But this is a 25 meter rim, rim, rim fire event for the most of these events are. Some are um, used to larger rifles, but they simulate the um, range up to uh, 400 yards, 500 yards uh, by, by using special targets. And uh, we um, set off a lot of rounds, over 500 rounds, and I'd hate to uh, have to do that with my uh, 308. Uh, with uh, rimfire, it's uh, just with just a nickel, uh, a cartridge, just uh, something that you that you can uh, afford to practice with. But I highly recommend this marksmanship clinic. Uh, AppleseedInfo.org. I recommend you go to AppleseedInfo.org. They're taught in, uh, in every uh, state of the union. Uh, find where they're taught near you and sign up for a class and, uh, and get involved and uh, let's take this republic back. This is Survival Doc reminding you be prepared or be prepared to be pleased. Some of the soldiers and officers who wrote the remembrances of that day you have to remember the countryside, these roads that they're marching on meander through the hills, cross over frequent streams. And some of the folks that wrote about that day said when they looked up on the sides of the hills there were so many colonials flocking towards them that looked like the hills were crawling with ants. 14,000 men streaming in from the countryside, converging on the Lexington and Concord area. Once I've determined as the coach that I've given them enough time to lose their NPOA, I'm going to remove my hand. And here's where it gets just a touch complicated. If the shooter has his NPOA, he starts shooting. And he has five seconds for every round. So bang, and the coach, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, went bang, start again, 1,001, 1,002. He puts it all the way up into his armpit. He brings his arm around the outside. He grasps the rifle. He pulls the butt straight down to lock it in. Do not neglect the step. The step is important, okay? Now, he's going to lever the butt up into his pocket. Do a little windmill with your arm, okay? No, no, over. Oh, your, your windmill is right. You just need to now. Stop. You will notice. Palm is open. Platform supporting the rifle. Sling is snug. Elbow is directly under the rifle. Firm handshake grip. C-shaped trigger. Man, this is starting to sound familiar, isn't it? It's a lot of the same stuff. Now, whenever you're shooting, if you cannot plant your trigger elbow chicken wing it. If you can't plant it on the ground or on your knee or something, chicken wing it. Okay? Now, this, and you notice how I had him do the windmill? That kind of accentuates the pocket and tells
helps to get that rifle in the pocket. Now you will notice that he has brought the butt up to his cheek and not his cheek down. Think about what your elbow looks like. Is there any stability in putting the, the ball on top of the ball? Not at all. You're just going to roll all over the place. Lean forward, get that elbow in front of the knee. That way when I give him some 308 recoil, what happens? He's a weeble wobble. He just comes right back to where he started from. That's your recoil absorption system. Support elbow also in front of the knee. Hand, trigger hand, firm handshake grip. Pull that sh buttstock of your rifle back into your shoulder pocket. The pocket's not as pronounced now because the elbow is not as high as it was in the standing position, but you still got a pocket there. Trigger finger does not. Trigger finger does not. Touch wood, drag wood. Hook that in like a big C. All these are starting to sound familiar. Turkey neck. Drop your cheek down onto the, the stock of the rifle, get a good cheek well. Consistency and stability and everything. And once again, getting down in this position, think your way around your body. I always, I literally like to start with my forward hand and I just mentally think around all these different steady hold factors. I walk my way around my body and my mind. Make sure I got everything right. How would you adjust your NPOA in this position? Let's say you had to adjust it, uh, your windage, your left and right. Most, the most, the best way I've ever heard to describe it is pick a cheek and scoot around it. <laughs> it's the best thing you can do. In terms of adjusting your elevation, you can spread your legs further out or bring them further in. You can even, depending upon the type of magazine you have, you can move your support hand closer or further away if you don't have a big point where you're always holding. Anybody have any questions about the cross feet leg? Find a place to, that your feet don't slip out from underneath you. Still key important. Get that flat part of your elbow in front of the flat part of your knee on both your trigger elbow and your support elbow. Firm handshake grip, trigger finger like a C, only touching the trigger. Turkey neck, cheek weld. Kneeling. When the cover is even taller, or when the body just don't bend that way, kneeling is an option. In this case, what we want to have, again, man, redundancy, over and over again. Front half of the platform, sling is snug, now you can actually get your elbow underneath the rifle, and you actually want this forearm and your knee and your uh, your leg to be straight up and down as much as possible. That'll help adjust your elevation as well. For your trigger foot, you can do a couple different things. He's got his toe bent under. Depending upon your ankle and the boots or whatever you're wearing, you can flatten it out. Some people actually even twist it sideways. Oh, and sit side oh, 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 o